ルルルルルルルはい。Here we are. This is the way we roll, we roll. This is the way we roll. Shake up, uh, hard, hard and shaky. Make it a cocktail of caffeine, taurine, or whatever supplemental things that are in G Fuel. <sighs> Need the caffeine. This is always five hours of this. Get the volume where it needs to be. There we go. Here now we're going to continue our quests. We got two more quests for this, and then we will see about other quests. Might not be able to complete them all, but hey, goal here is to get Diable Jump. Job gear. If anything, we need the diable job gear for Reaper because that's my my main. That's what I'm playing for the main story. Ah, there it goes. I have better I have better news for you, but the blasphemy continues to elude us. Can you hear me, Commander? It's Weisscott. I have an idea uh, how we might take down the blasphemy. Meet me in Costa del Sol as soon as you are able. Well, that sounds promising. I'll tell the Admiral you'll be be away for a bit. Godspeed and stay stay safe out there. I also just made, my, made myself some lunch. It's nothing special, it's just some tomato soup with some sausage and cheese. Apologies for having you come all this way, amigos. Ever since our encounter with the blasphemy, I've been racking my brain to find a way of dealing with this little bit. Delibit, de debilitating attack. Sadly, I've come up empty handed and my companions fare no better. That's when I started thinking if only our finest was still with us. Always had a knack for noticing what the rest of us missed. His eyes are so sharp he could spot a foe's weakness with a single glance. It's thanks to him that we are able to slay both of Leviathan and Titan and live to tell the tale. The rub is, well, he's a bit eccentric. And yes, I know you could say say that about all the company members. And unlike us, he prefers to work from the shadows. Truth be told, I've not seen him since the day we disbanded. I doubt he's helped his he'd help his old comrades, even if we asked. But an order from the company's acting commander there would be a different story. In my our heyday, they had a way of we had a ray of reaching him. Whistle at the forked road, and sooner or later he show up. Didn't matter when, winter or summer, in broad daylight or in the dead of night, he'd always be watching from afar. If any luck, he still is now. Huh? But I'm rambling on enough. Go on now. This may be our best and only hope. Yeah, I was enjoying my retirement. <sighs> Why do you have to go and bloody whistle? Call me Lorenz. I'm the company's resident sharpshooter. Last I was in 
At least I was in my day. No need to tell you who, who tell me who you are. I've been watching you for quite some time. Don't get me wrong get the wrong idea. I was just curious on how my former mates were faring. I was curious if folks were about me though. First wise Scott, then old Mistbeard himself. Ha! As if those codgers could ever catch me. And now I owe us a storied hero. Hero summons me forth. No need to say why. You're going to ask me to help you take down the blasphemy. We've, uh, let's see. Am I just going to order him or have we forgotten the duty of the Forgotten the duty of the strong? Heh, <laughs> never could refuse whenever somebody trotted out those acne. acne words. So tell me, acting commander, what specific duty would you have tasked me with? I trust you do have a plan. Exposition. So you need a way to neutralize the beast's most potent task. I'm doing the completely wrong accent for this, but this is how I'm feeling. It's like, ugh. Really? Ah, oh, I was enjoying my retirement. I could tell you just like getting up close and personal with your foes. So you'll be needing support from a distance. Who do you suppose might be a better suited to the role? It's probably going to be more of the Scottish or Irish accent. Maybe an Irish accent. Arr. Oh, you, of course. Damn right. As among the keenest in the realm, you doubtless heard from Weisket. I'm pure marksman. None in the, the Mensa or the Admiral's equal. Yet Melweb is ill-suited for a supporting role. Not, uh, not for lack of skill, of course, but rather... I'm going to think of it. There's something you should know. Follow me. Quite the view, wouldn't you say? I often come here to admire the sea. If you would indulge me for a moment, I'll spin you yarn. Just try not to doze off. Back in piracy's golden age, the League of Lost Bastards ruled the Britano. I was one of them, as was Merib. We were led by none other than her old man, Lucifus Lucifwin. Lucif? Lucif Wits. <laughs> the most feared captain on the high seas. Feared by the fright enemies that is stern and unforgiving though he was, he took me under his wing and showed me the ropes. Arr, maybe, maybe I do need to go with more pirate accent. Arr. Aye, you were like a father to me. To us all. To that fateful day. It was in the year 1562 of the Sixth Astral Era. The Minson merchantmen, merchantmen were struggling with nigh constant raids by the Sahagin. Around this time, Blusif had yielded the day to day leadership of the bastards to Merowib his pride and joy. He was still growing into the role, though, and everyone knew the old captain was still calling the shots. Old Blusif had a, a noble streak, he did. Ordered us to defend the traitors from the fishbacks. Merlewib led the, the effort, and we fought day after day to keep the seas safe. The fighting was fierce, and we always came out in, out in one piece until we didn't. Until after a skirmish, a Sahagan survivor, on his last breath, summoned the Lord of the World. The great beast toppled our masts and cracked the keel with an egg, like an egg. We clambered aboard the merchantman as our ship sank, not to do, 
do not to do but to wait for the end. But then comes Lucifer and his bleeding flotilla out of nowhere to pull us out of the fire. We did. But the League of Lost Bastards would never be the same again. For even though he escaped with our lives, we soon discovered that Captain Blusif, this iron-willed, unwavering leader, had fallen under Leviathan's thrall. Of course, in those days, we didn't know much about drowning or tempering. And didn't know what to make of our captain as he grew more and more aggard by the day. His words devoting into re crazed ramblings, and one day he vanishes, taken off with Athos Armen. Not long after, a band of pirates calling themselves the Serpent Reavers began making prizes in the Indigo, making prizes in the Indigo Deep alongside the Sahagin. At their helm was none other than Captain Blusif. He cast his lot with the fish, lot with the fishbacks. Merwim knew what to had to be done, and to her credit, she didn't shirk from her deed. She acted quickly, sneaking off undercover at night with skeleton crew, without so much as telling me. Of course, that didn't stop me from stowing myself in the cargo hold and joining her on the voyage. She was none too happy to see me at first, wanting to leave me out of it, she said, but seeing as I made myself known when she was struggling to fend off a horde of a reavers and fishback, it wasn't hard to win her over. Her twin muskets fell in one after the next, as my sharpshooting kept her safe from afar. We cut a path to the center of the isle, at, and was there we found Blusif, or ra rather the miserable wretch he had been reduced to, all bones with skin shriveled and a tangled mat of white hair, eyes bulging from his head like a fish. He prayed to the lord of the world. Merwood challenged him to a duel, and a dim memory must have flickered in his drowned mind for, as he accepted. So, with only me there to witness it, Mitterwib ended her father's life. The League of Lost Bastards would have lined up to to its lived up to his name if it weren't for Merwib. And she assumed full command and restored us to our former glory. Not long after, she triumphed in the Trident and was named Chief Admiral of Limsa Liminsa. I often think back upon that day, seeing her charge into battle muskets blazing. Might seem reckless to some, but that's how Captain Blusif taught her, and she knows not other no other way. That's why I made it my job to support her from the shadows, and it's a role of which I happily serve again. I owe that much to her old man. My only doubt was whether you, my friend, were worthy of commanding me, and watching ye from far has answered that question. Aye. Tell Wiscott and the rest of my no-good companions that Loren stands with them. Did Loren show himself? Exposition. Haha! <laughs> now that's a surprise. I had some some hope your words might reach him, but never did I imagine he would agree so readily. Uh, just one thing, Abagos. I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention Loren's involvement to the company. And Dell in particular. They thought they'll find out soon enough regardless. At any rate, that gives us new hope in our battle against the blasphemy. All that remains is to set the snare and lure the beast into our clutches. Our scouts are at the l on the lookout of the creature as we speak. If the latest reports of it be to believe, we are drawing ever closer. And with that, I best get back to it. Can you trust you to report these latest developments to the Maelstrom? Then tell until we meet again, Commander.
Oh, and lag. My soup is cold. I can at least have some. Oh, you've been teleported. Nope. Still quite hot. The search for the blasphemy continues, so I understand you've been carrying out an entirely different investigation. Exposition. A marksman by the name of Lorenze, the Admiral would be pleased. Of course, we don't have much much call for his skill until the blasphemy is found. Rest well and prepare yourself as necessary in the meantime. Lorenz, why does that ring a bell? Secretary Terriet appears visibly dismayed. Despite our best efforts, blasphemy continues to elude us. For the time being, we decide to interrupt by an incoming communication from Musket. Commander, we've snared ourselves to blasphemy. We're an erstwhile companion. We've our erstwhile companion. A uh, companion Riol to thank. Knowing that the creature was uh, once the Sahagan Queen and kept the close light us on the spawning grounds. Sure enough, he spied a bla massive black shadow moving er beneath the water not long ago. After receiving word, Shimani Lamani directed the Maelstrom warships to the vicinity to herd the beast with cannon fire into the Shastasha Seagrot. Isolated as the Seagrot is, we could we can engage our foe without putting small, fo small folk at risk. Any met words for your men, Commander? The duty of the strong is to protect the weak. You don't have to tell me twice. We were naked for a rematch. Russian bonding is still, we still go as poorly as you, for you as it did the first time. <laughs> ha! Knowing you, I'm sure you'll show up just in time to see me deal the killing blow. Now, now, can we not take our vitriol for the quarry? Save our vitriol for the quarry, which I, I've lured to the perfect spot that is now waiting patiently for all, all of you to put it out of its misery? Great red brace locks, gobby booms, blast over big, blast me into bitty pieces. Motley your crew I've never find, but we'll serve you well when the battle is joined. Believe you me. This is Merweb. I will... I will ready a warship at once. Assemble her outside the wench once you've all seen to your preparations. The time has come. I shall pray for your victory. And there's Merwib for our solo duty. Ah, I'm a ghost. The others have uh, should be along soon. Blasphemy is still contained within the Sastasha Sigrat. There it will meet its end. Navigator, for me. Should that my brothers and I could join you in the fight for Jack Blacksmith, though it may be the beast was once our mother. I understand, though. Forgive us for what we must do. Were there a means to reverse the transformation, we would do all in our power to bring your mother back. Sadly, there is nothing left for, of her to save. For the future of the Sahagan and Nymphs and Aminsa alike, the blasphemy must be laid to rest. And when the deed is done, I will bring your brothers, even the crushing tide, aboard the great ship we call the Brim. I do not want to slay your mother, but this thing she has become, a mindless beast who would enslave or kill her own, is an affront to the memory of who she was. It is not her. It is not. Remember this always. You must. I will not ask you to shoulder the burden of matricide. 
When the time comes to strike the final blow, I will do the deed. Admiral, all that you say is true, and yet... Commander, we've sighted a group of fishbacks, crushing tide most like, heading straight for, for the sea grot. You best make your way, way here, and fast. Time to move out then. Any words for your men before we set sail? No gotta time me out there. Uh, I'm gonna say I gotta be the don't go time I mean, out there. Ha! Our new commander is sounding more and more like the old one. Enough talk, it's time to show the realm that the company of heroes hasn't lost its lost the step. Aye! We'll stand a better chance at slipping past the crushing tide if we split up. Amagos and I will go together while the rest of you take a different route. Let us brook no further delay to Sashtasha. My queen, I beg you, pray, show your loyal son mercy. I kind of wish they would have some voice lines. Blasphemy, indigo beast. It's Tao, or what's left of him. Speak of how? Why would the queen do such a thing? It, it's as the showwalkers say that we thought the blessing is in truth a terrible curse. The horror. We must away at once. And leave the showwalkers to face our queen alone? No, I will stand with them. You mustn't sully your hands with the blood of your mother. Go and be with your kin. Go. Forgive me. This is not because Merwib is a woman. It's because she is a strong woman. <laughs> There's Lawrence. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I was beginning to think you wandered off a cliff, Lawrence. Let's just say it like that. I prefer to think of myself as freshly late. But enough talk. It comes. All right, here we go. Maybe I should have titled this uh, episode to, to Kill the Blasphemy. Here it comes. We're counting on you, Lorenz. Leave it to me. Ah, no enemy's weakness escapes my eyes. He's a machinist. All right, there we go. See how, how easy he was? I reckon he can do it too, acting commander. Basically attack from...
big too. They're too big. There was a whole bunch of talking, but I couldn't read on all while I was trying to figure out everything and actually remember my level 90 rotation. Uh, I'm trying to integrate Caminio, and I'm not sure how. I will not ask your forgiveness, but this I promise. You will be remembered for the mother you were. Admiral, I have no words. Our Queen Mother returns to the depths in eternal slumber. With your strength, you could have crushed us easily. Why did you spare our lives? The beasts and blasphemies are born from the despair in our hearts. But no more. I will break the cycle. Though Dao may have been blind to it, I believe in a future where Sahagin and Lominson live in harmony.
Even after losing who she was, our, your queen made for your spawning grounds. And there it is, she drew her last breath. When our, your next queen is crowned, know she will, will have a safe place to raise her young. Once you have selected a suitable location, Limsa Lamensa will recognize and honor your claim. A promise of such, of which we are grateful, Admiral. And what will uh, the other peoples of Vilbrand? The Cobalts are open to the idea. The details will need to be negotiated, but I am confident we can reach an agreement. Sahagan, so Cobalt, and Lamensen alike yearn to abide in peace. We can make it so. I have ne never fought alongside your workers before, but I must say, it felt good. We have fought our neighbors for generations. It was one us only suffering and tragedy. I beg of you, lay down your spears. We'll take time and effort to bridge the gulf between our peoples, but bridge it we shall. <laughs> Thorin's trying to sneak off. I dare say we have a lot of talking to do as well, don't we, Commander Lorenz? Uh, Lanendale, if we, you just allow me to explain. Let us be off before they drag us into this mess. I would say poor Lorenz, but I don't know. It might be. Perfect timing, acting commander. Hey, you must. Perfect timing, acting commander. You must save me from the blood searching bastard. Well, Lorenz, let's hear your excuse. It better be a good one. Why in the seven elves were you skulking about in the shadows while we did all the dirty work? I like you. Like you'd not be any happier if you showed me soon. Show myself sooner. I can hear you wing, wing, whining now. What do you think we? We could have handled... What? You didn't think we could handle this on our own? I have been bloody furious regardless. Don't think I've forgotten what happened, or rather didn't happen, on the day of our duel. Even though the, f though the future of the company hung in the balance, I waited and waited and waited some goddamn more. Still, you never turned up. And I got you now. I will have my satisfaction. Given the Ren's penchant for for late arrivals, I couldn't help but worry too. To say he got it fine would be an understatement. And by no and not by choice as usual, my scouts observed him roaming near Costa del Sol not long ago. It would see my commander's willful sense of direction was not improved in the least. I am honestly surprised you never real realized, Lanendel, that that was to blame for his extreme tardiness, that the commander did indeed arrive at the agreed location for your duel, after the sun had risen and set to half a dozen times. Navigator, take me. Shimani, you promised you would stay, be stay between the two of us. Promised that would stay between the two of us. A oh, brace locks, you have a kind word or two for your old commander, don't you? Commander Lorenz, commander no more. New commander, friend to Gobbies everywhere. There does many sweat works for Gobby kind. Uh, and there I thought. 
There I thought you were too much of a coward to face me in battle. I'm not a Lenendel. You know me better than... Then it's settled. We'll fight here now. On your guard! Put that thing away! <laughs> you can hurt somebody with it! <laughs> Hard to believe it was the glue that he was once the glue that held this very band together. That's right. If you hadn't realized <laughs> the obvious, Lorenz is our former commander. Forgive me for not stating it plainly sooner. They didn't want you to think we doubted your leadership. He got his quirks, but as you saw, he's a force of nature on the battlefield. Anyhow, I think we had all all say our stint as that. Say your state as acting commander has been a rousing success. Now I reckon it's about time you gave your final order. Competing heroes, band break once more. Brief locks never like parting with gobby friends. Here, here. I may have my complaints, but when we're, we're together, a good fight's never far away. You hardly need company in your commander to get to, to get you that. And should Lemensa again be imperiled, there's nothing stopping us. From rising to the occasion. Till then, you're all strong enough in your own right. Why not serve the weak in your own ways? <clears throat> Shrug. You've had quite the turn, the turn of duty, but all all good things must come to an end. Any parting words before we go our separate ways? <laughs> Give Gigi Rudy my best regards. <laughs> Finally, I can enjoy some semblance of peace again. At least as much peace as a man can can enjoy, meaning hand and foot on the Lord of Costa del Sol. It may have been been rough sailing at times, but I rather enjoyed serving under you, Acting Commander Emikos. Well, if there's something to say, I'd hear it. Turn to the world boys, keep the murdering to a minimum. Ah, if I needed you to tell me. Well, I enjoyed the diversion. I know as well as many in my troop. Place in Gardania leading to a respectable life. May not have been the, the perfect commander, but 12 as my witness, I hope to fight on your side again. Farewell. I await your orders, commander. Look after the you, brave nun. Ah. I have responsibilities, a tribe that wants for my guidance and protection. I can ill afford to tarry here much longer. Nevertheless, it is with most regret that I take my leave. I'm not going to try to do the, the whole rolling arch thing. For all their faults, and of which they have many, they are my commandments. And I will miss them. Well, let's hear it, Commander. Are you a bottle of your finest pockets? <laughs> indeed, indeed. I mean to return to wine port as soon as I'm tied up a few final loose ends here. Speaking of wine, I've always preferred the older vintages. I'm left to sleep in their barrels for as many a summer. They come out tasting better than ever. One might say the same about our own company. Shuck. Brave Flax wants, wants busy work. Brave Flax wants Uplander's lip flaps. No more cheese words. Please. Brave Flax feels heavy heart, but accepts Uplander's bossy words. Fox had good times and happy feels with gappy friends, but 
the good times will come again, and when they do, new boomsticks will bring Blasty Doom with much fesses. On that note, I ought to be on my way. Slipping away again, are we? No creature of habit. I resented you for it. At the time, you know. But I think I understand now. Better to shun fame and not serve as, serve as an example for glory seekers. Too eager to fight and too quick to die. You're overthinking it. I'm a creature of whimsy. A man who likes the tailwind carry him where, where it will. But most importantly, the new age belongs to the new blood. I've had my day in the sun. If you succeeded in brokering peace with the beastmen, there will be no need to worry about primals, and the company can go into permanent retirement. And then I can say I, I did wrecked by the old man. If you hadn't been there, there for us both, I don't know if we would have pulled... If I could have pulled the trigger. Thank you, Lorenz. Brother. Ah, I did nothing. It was you who shouldered Captain Blosif's burden. And that of the entire League. I'm sorry, Milwood. I know it hasn't been easy for you. But I dare say you've worked hard enough. Maybe us company folk aren't the only ones in need of retirement. Ah, but I've said too much. Lorenz holding his tongue. Gods, you have changed. But yes, my greatest test as Admiral still lies ahead as we steer the great ship Filbrin towards a new future. Ah, you truly are your father's daughter. I owe you my thanks too, dare say. You did almost as good a job of keeping my men in task as I could have done. at a hunch, but something's telling me our, our paths may cross again, but forgive me if I carry on until I've never seen like I've never seen you before. Not unlike my old friend Miss Beard. I prefer to keep my past in the past. Not unlike my old friend Miss Beard. I prefer to keep my past in the past. And with that, I'm off. Take care of yourself. We could not. <laughs> the blast means no more, but we will never know lasting peace until the crushing tide agrees to lay down their arms. We'll be a daunting task, but we, but as we saw at Sastasha, they are not beyond reason. I will do all in my power to see that your your efforts and the sacrifices of my brothers were not in vain. Forgive us. Even after being freed from false thrall, still we clung to our hateful beliefs. It was easier to hearken to speakers' drows every word and turn a blind eye to the harsh truth, easier said and cowardly. I will return and speak with my brothers to the crushing tide. I will tell them of our Queen Mother's sacrifice and the vo vision of hope we have shared with us. I ask only that you give us time and trust to make our own decision. You have my word. If you would not be a, a, be averse, let us return to the spawning grounds together. Adventurer, I have no words to express my gratitude. I will pay you the only way I know how, by doing my part to usher in the aid for Shorewalker and Sahagin stand as one. Just us now, it would seem. Ever since we achieved a measure of peace with the Kobolds, I prayed that this day would come. Though it is, of course, only a beginning, negotiations must be held and words exchanged in earnest will invariably lead to fl flared tempers and bruised egos, but such things always accompany meaningful progress. The history of Vilberin is one of bloodshed, but we have the power to change our ways. 
After all, it is clear we are united more by our similarities than we are divided by our differences. I will share what I have seen of the Sahagan with my fellow Lamincens and listen closely to their doubts and concerns. For it must be a harmony not foisted upon them from above, but one which they aspire to in their own free will. No doubt Noel and his brothers feel the same. Again, you have come to Lamincens' aid. My aid, at a time we needed it most. When we next meet, I hope it will not be as Admiral and Adventurer, but as friends. They have trading royal stories over ales at the wench. But for now, I must return to my duties. Drafting reports and decrees is hardly the most exciting part of my role, but it is a necessary one. If you happen to pass through Ratsatan, share, pray share your exploits with our delegate there. Doubtless, he will be interested to hear your first-hand account. One day I will lay down these muskets of mine for good. But not yet, father. Not yet. Is it possible that uh, the patch content for... Part of the patch content for Endwalker is... Uh... Whoops, stepping down. It's possible. Those two quests took less than fifty minutes about fifty minutes. She returned. Pray tell what news from my homeland. Exposition. Extraordinary and a, a chance at peace with the Sahagan. They're hardening tidings indeed. Without a doubt, you have helped to dispel the pall of despair that once hung over all Vilburned. Our people now bask in a newfound hope. I must share the news with the others. Fully glad, full glad that they be to hear the threat with Lamensa Lamensa is no more. Thank you, my friend. You can now drive the job specific gear for level 90 melee DPS. And diet I will. See if I could get better lighting. Nope. Maybe out in the hall. Not entirely. Not entirely red, but. Appropriately red. I was hoping the uh, face mask would have gotten died as part of this, but apparently not. All right. Oop! There. Accidentally snapped a picture. All right. Moving down. Okay, so I'm still level 89 on, on my Gunbreaker. So 
I'm going to start the job quest for this. Mm, uh, see how far into 89 I get. I don't have much rest of XP because I was po I've was i been power lean, level lean. But let's start that off. Danya, who is full of healers and DPS, uh, they need a tank. I have come on behalf of the Twin Adders to enlist the aid of the accomplished fighters. The small uh, folk cower in their homes for fear of an unprecedented threat of the Twelve Sword, a blasphemy. It strikes quickly and with deadly precision before returning to the shadows once it came. Try as we might, we have yet to devise a means to track it, not track it much less slay it. Several brave souls search for it even now, but their chances would improve greatly if they would have a stout protector by their side. Judging by your reputation, I dare say you are precisely the man we seek. What say you? Will you serve as the shield that stands between Cortania and the certain doom? Protecting the realm is what I do. I will take that as an enthusiastic yes. Make haste to the Adder's Nest and report to my superior. All Gridania will, s will pray for your success. Earlier is on at Radzatan, sent word of your arrival, and I still scarcely believe our luck. Are you truly here to help us bring this wicked blasphemy to heal? Then there is hope for us yet. I shall fetch the Elder Sisi at once. She is leading the hunt, and I'm certain she'll be most eager to see you. Full glad as I am to welcome you in good health and good spirits, Amigos. On behalf of all of Gordania, allow me to thank you for ri rising to our defense yet again. You will forgive me for assuming for further formalities. As time is of the essence, I shall share with you what little we know of this elusive scourge. Following the events in Thavnir, we received a report that an unidentified man was fallen into fits on the road before transforming into a beast much fa most foul. Blasphemy, we have determined. Eyewitnesses to subsequent attacks spoke of patterns in its skin reminiscent of heavy chains, and thus we will named it Gleipir. Gleipnir, for the creature of legend. It emerges from the brush without warning, bringing destruction and tragedy to those unfortunate enough to be near, and we can respond it retreats into hiding, leaving no trace for us to follow. Your mentals cry out for us to rid the forest of this wicked presence. Yet even if we track it to its lair, I fear I fear besting the beast would be no simple matter. The wounds of Glimpy's vi victims are, are tainted by corruption. We can but to conclude that the fiend's fangs, claws, and horns are all imbued with powerful poison. The smaller scratch sends the afflicted into fits and death soon follows. Mayhap you know of the creeping death, the effects of the glip the Gleipnir's vile poison bear more than a passing similarity to the Simpsons of the de Deadly Plague. It swept through the Twelve Year Woods Twelve Woods many years ago, 
The sick found their skin covered in chain-like patterns, patterns and spent their final moments in excruciating pain. It was long before I came to Gudania, but people, people still speak of it with dread. Is it true that the disease is spared not a single here? Very nearly, yes. Before the remainder were taken, we were able to devise a cure with the glimpse of the mushroom. Slow though it was, the scars of this tragedy could then begin to heal. Leapnir's Leapnir threatens to reopen old wounds, I fear. Yet despite the similarities between the blasphemy's corruption and the creepy death mark, it is unclear how these two phenomena are related, if at all. Both Condry and White Magic have failed to abate the poison spread. To confront Leapnir now would place our soldiers at risk of, of grievous injury. Forgive me, the seeds here, but this appears to be urgent. What? Again? Leapnir has struck once more on the North Shroud. The whalers came too late to see the beast themselves, but the man in attack yet lives. They're bringing him to Fal Falgold Float as we speak. Then we must meet them there. Will you accompany us, Amigos? Aethamir you know, should be able to appraise us of the details upon our arrival. Elder Tsisir, we are honored with your presence. I cannot thank you enough for coming all this way. Given the dire circumstances, I would not leave this to another. Where is the wounded man? Outside of the bobbing cork, being attended to by one of our heroes. He is a capable hero, but I worry this will is beyond his abilities. I shall do all in my power to aid him. I, in turn, may have need of assistance as well. I ask that you stay close, both of you. He's a hardy soul, but it's but I'm utterly at a loss. While I manage to heal his wounds, the poison lingers. I fear the worst is yet to come. When I removed his clothes for treatment, and I recognized the chains, if this is indeed the creeping death, do not lose heart. I shall spare no effort. Best for now, mainly of need of your talents again ere long. Here goes, man. Here goes. Bloody swarm of them. I came for these gate. Chigos are known as carriers of the creeping death. The villagers are on edge. They think the Valkin harbingers of another plague. They may panic. Pray see to the Chigos. Maybe it's cicadas. I shall remain here with the victim. They were near all the springs, a whole swarm of them, like an army getting ready for war. Bring the creeping death like others not. Folks will be dropping dead with no rhyme or reason, and it's not about to, about to join them. No, sir, can bring him back fast as my legs could carry me. I mean, where you bitten? I will show you to here, here or so. Not a single hole that doesn't belong. Well, you can be sure, and best do what do something about that swarm, swarm though. With that we could, but keeping the gate manned is our priority. We have not the numbers to spare for a hunting party. By the time the, 
By the time my little reinforcements arrive, maybe too late. We'll deal with the the cicadas. There's the one who calls the greater number owes the other flag an eye eye. I commend your bravery. Godspeed and don't get bitten. Well This whaler is That was... Uh, oh, was going to Probably not meant to be hard. be praised and you I've been I've come bearing a cure for the quipping death and it's a little but it's a little use against actual death aye that's why I've come I've heard tell of a man suffering from an uncommon pains at a full gold float since an opportunity for philanthropy philanthropy and a touch of profit I admit but if that's what you say is true his condition demands as much swifter pair of feet than mine could you bring the medicine to him in my stead? No need to payment this time, of course. You saved my life, and one good turn deserves another. I only hope the cure works as well as purported. As for me, I'll be on my way, and give it any vile can I spy a wide berth. Thank you for con coming the, calling the cicadas. Alas, our patient's condition has yet to improve, and it is all we can do to keep him from succumbing to the poison. I know this medicine. It was once used to treat the creeping death. Even his symptoms may prove effective here as well. Works upon the body quite quickly, as I recall. Uh, hold on just a while longer, my friend. The medicine will soon relieve your pain. I... I don't... It, uh, it hurts! Oh. Why? Why? Man shriek, shrieks die in his throat. His body is racked by violent convulsions. He then falls still and quiet as if his breath was snapped from his chest. Over mercy, at the very least the suffering is over. May we have been quicker to deliver the medicine, would he have lived? Nay, I think not. He was doomed from the moment the poison entered his blood. As will be others if we do not soon gain an understanding of our foe. Let this tragedy not be in vain, and so that the lesson. Though the effects of Gleepner's corruption resemble the creeping death, it is clear the two share little else in common. Poison burns through the body more quickly than any disease. Too deadly is it to be borne by creatures so fragile as cicadas. I'm just going to call them cicadas. I'm not sure if that's even the correct way to pronounce it. Maybe it actually is, but chigos. Maybe it's just chigos. Or any other besides. 
Then there is one less possibility that people need to fear. It is a shame that life is lost, but this knowledge may help us ensure the others are not. Spread word and do so with delicacy. In these troubled times, fear and despair can drive even the goodliest of souls to desperate ends. Deep is the only blasphemy known to us in Gridania, for now. We must do our utmost to stop him from sowing further discord. Understood, Adelicitia. I'll give this man a proper burial before sharing what we've discovered. Ascertaining Gleepnir's whereabouts is still the primary concern. Let us return to the Adder's Nest for information. Mm, shall be, for information shall be our most reliable weapon in the days ahead. And there is no better place to acquire it. Ribnir has been sighted in various locales, and though we are reviewing every report, we suspect most are erroneous. Fear has, has a way of making one jump at shadows. It will take some time before we have determined which reports merit a more further involved investigation. Until then, I ask that you stay vigilant and keep your eyes peeled for any sign of blasphemy. Yeah, these, uh... These quests only yield like half a million uh, XP, and I need like six million. And there's only five of them. We we'll get some. Yeah, there's a total of six: eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven, eighty-eight, eighty-nine, ninety. I have followed up on some report concerning Glipnir, even even those that beggared disbelief. The most promising include the blasphemy suggests the blasphemy is currently stuck in the South Shroud. We are to we are to proceed there at once, and there is no telling when it might strike again. The Aldecidia is already en route to, to Roots Lake. Let us not keep her waiting. Greetings, Emigos. As luck would have it, my sister Rhea O frequents tran Camp Tranquil. We may not. We would do well to meet with her first, but for she may not have knowledge of this threat that can aid us in our search. It's been too long, Rhea O. Connie, I... I was afraid this situation might force your arrival, with that this reunion was under more joyous circumstances. 
It's heartening to see you joined by the bearer of Artois' will. I'm also got White Mage up high enough. But I've done all the quests. Quest, which is with Rio. Unfortunately, Creepio's poison can't be cured by any healing force known to us. I'm sure you've already learned. Nevertheless, I have faith that together we will find a way to defeat it. Every moment is crucial, so let us dispense with further pleasant pleasantries. Have you received word of Creepio's whereabout? I have. I recently ambushed a poor traveler who's succumbed to. It recently ambushed a poor traveler who succumbed to his wounds soon thereafter. A tragic and increasingly common tale. No others in Camp Tranquil have come to harm, and some, but some claim they feel a presence in the distant trees, staring at them with a malicious tensity. They struggle to find the courage to venture beyond the safety of the camp. While his victims exhibit Simpsons reminiscent of the creeping death, Glipnia's corruption seems only to afflict those affect those who have been insulted by the blasphemy itself. We have yet to confirm a single instance of it spreading from one individual to another. That is somewhat reassuring, but we will pro provide little comfort to the people here, I think. If Glipnia comes, any defense we mount will come at great cost. Those who fa fall wounded will invariably die. I'm at a loss, and the people under my care can see it. They grow tense and bicker amongst themselves. Some even accuse me of standing idly by while this monster roams free. As if I'm not doing all I can. I apologize. Would that I have come to you sooner. Would that there was more I could offer you. Oops, the elementals can help. Elementals cry out for succor as loudly as the people do. This I know I know you feel, Connie. Gleepnir poses a threat to all life in Twelvewood, and as such, as we should face it as one. Their strength has waned since the calamity, and I'm reluctant to impose upon them. Nay, as seed seers it's our duty to first expend every option available to us and spare them further to rest. Once we have laid load the blasphemy, the elementals will be at peace. Well then, how do you propose we go about that? First, allow me to speak with the people here and assure that there will be that all will be well. That Gordania's resolve to weather this storm remains steadfast. No road is closed to those those true of heart. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that you begin with an earnest and heartfelt appeal. For my part, I shall reach out to Erun. Perhaps together we can find a way to offer similar comforts to the Elementals. I have no doubt we will require your assistance in the days ahead. Thank you, my sister. May the Twelve watch over and keep you both. May I trouble you to accompany me? The presence of the storied hero would surely lead credence to my claims as that the people's difficulties will soon be an end. This music is from, the last I heard it was, I think it was in Slitherbow in uh, the Rectifia Greatwood. Well, I love this music because it was from Shadowbringers, and Shadowbringers is my favorite x pack <laughs> Let you attend to that, I shall gather what information I can from the Wood Whaler stationed here. Pray look for me at the camp proper when you have finished. If you are, we are to convince the people that they need not fear and live in fear of Glipnir, then my words alone may be sus insufficient. I do not comport myself as an impo imposing figure blessed with martial arts to say the least. You, on the other hand, are renowned as a peerless world warrior who has triumphed in countless trials. Simply looking at your features fills me with confidence that this crisis too shall pass. I pray you stay by my side, that those who speak might be joyed by your presence. Connie Zena is now accompanying you, Keeper, at your side in order to pursue you with quest objectives. Blah, 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 blah. 
Behold, somebody's accompanying you. Cetius is still pretty, sitting pretty with the gods, with the gods of finery. What do they care if a bit beasties running amok? Muck, they'll be fine. That's why they're doing nothing while it haunts us. We'd be fools to trust our lives with those who don't care, care wit. I past time we went south. At least the little doll, they don't pretend to look out, out for the com don't pretend to look out for the common men. I just, it's here. I was just uh uh I promise you that you are sp we are sparing no effort on our hunt for Glipnia. However, it will take many take time and more more may suffer before the beast is laid low. Nevertheless, I ask you place your faith in me, if only for a little while. I love the twelve swift and her people with all my heart, that I will not let a any many me torment us forever. Ah, I understand. Men's gotta give voice voice to his ways from time to time, eh? Nothing I want less than to abandon my home. I'll stick around for now. A single scratch is enough to spell one's doom. They say nothing but to wait for death to come. How can we face a beast like that? Do not give in to despair, my friend. Know that I do, shall do it all in my power to see us through the crisis. Hold fast to hope and encourage others to do so as well. I'll try, the seeds here, I'll try. I know you place yourself at risk leaving the safety of the city and coming here. That means a lot to me, Mon. I'll stay close to the whalers and pray news of your triumph reaches us soon. Thank you. I promise that it will not be long. Assault! A gargantuan beast stalked the woods with horns the size of my leg. What's to stop it from coming here to fill its belly? Glipnir will do no such thing, I swear. I shall see to it personally that the blasphemy does not come within a mile of this village. Keep heart for, uh, for brighter days lie ahead of us. Truly, other seats here. Ah, perhaps I let my imagination get the better of me. You are a beacon in these dark times, and pray you restore the peace soon. I shall. You can be certain. Will that be all for now, Elder Seeds here? It will. I have done what I can to quell the unrest. But so long as Glepnir lives, there, there will never be peace. Indeed, you are correct. Today has become has welcome reminder of that truth and an important step in our journey. Yeah, hope I should visit the, these settlements more often. Doubtless, some here think we are me as distant as the elementals. So rarely do they see me in the outer reaches. You have served me admirably as protectors thus far, in which I am grateful. Yet until we have found that found and they let me know, I must continue to impose upon your goodwill. There's no imposition, Elder Seeds here. You saved me on the killing fields of Cartano. My life is yours, now and always. Your life is, is your own command. But I thank you for your words, and your conviction. It fills me with confidence that the path we walk is true. Even if that path takes us far afield. Hmm. I ever tell you that? When I was a young student, I would often steal into the woods with a dear friend of mine. Much to the chagrin of my te our teacher. Deep down, I suspect there is still the part of me that yearns to wander where I should not. Elder oh, Tsitsia, yeah. word from the border. We've got ourselves a ripe bloody mess by the sound of it. What has happened? Per your early instructions, the whalers closed the roads to all travel while we scoured the woods for signs of Glipnia. 
But now a group of locals are demanding to be let through into Thanalan. They're terrified by the sound of it, screaming about the creeping death and God knows what else. Despair grips their hearts. If it consumes them wholly, then we may have yet more blasphemies to contend with. I will speak with them. Wild rumors fuel their panic, and with truth and compassion, will I convince them to see reason and return to their homes. If anyone can, can it's you, Elder Sitzia. We're doing our best to keep them calm for now, but my man's words painted a grim picture. I pray you may make your way to the border as quickly as you can. I'm sure uh, Lennon will probably mention something about Commander. It was the last that. Let us through, damn you. We're standing here while the creepy death nips at our heels. They're telling, telling us to die. You're telling us to die. These rumors are false. The elder seeds here herself sent word that the creeping death is not responsible for the recent incidents. You mustn't surrender to panic. Return to your homes while we deal with the threat and pray no he pay no heed to baseless stories. Stories? Stories? I've seen the dead with my own eyes. Don't tell me what it is and isn't true. Hearken to me, my friends. I come before you now to assure you that the creeping death has not returned. Only those who have been wounded by Glepnir are in danger, and so I beseech you to take shelter in your homes until the threat has passed. Glepnir? The beast I saw in the wood? We have to run. I could have followed. It could have followed us. You saw him? Where? Not far from here, those glistening horns, those terrible chains, reaching out to drag me down to the seventh hell. We ran and ran and never looked back. But don't worry, it didn't catch any of us. No one marked, see? That means, that means we're safe, right? Nay, but, but say we weren't quite fast enough. What then? It's horns and claws. Uh, where the poison resides, and even a scratch could be cause for concern. Even a little scratch, and and it's too late for me. Is that why my body feels like like it's on fire? You told me the branches tripped you up. You said that's how it happened. You said. Oh, heavenly winds guide us to the font of strength. May we drink of it and be made of. I, I don't feel any better. Do it again. Do it again. It hurts. Help me. Country has no effect. There could be no mistake this is Glepnir's doing. Even so, I ask that you do not lose heart. Stay strong. Or if we surrender to fear, the beast has already won. No. I don't want to die. Please. Help me. Help me. Oh! Get back! You said... You said it wasn't... Uh, why? Lies! Lies! All of you! None of us are safe! None of us will... Ah! 
Despair may manifest, Twelfth Offend. Is there not that can be done with these poor souls? Not but one thing I know. I know. We must lay them to rest. Contain the threat. I do have it up. May we peace. Would that I had not come to this and powerless to prevent it. You did all you could, at least, he'd see her. Is that what's going to happen to us? Is there no hope? What you witnessed was the fate of those who fall to great deepest despair. It feeds upon grief and anguish and is more deadly than Glepnir itself. But as I swore to you that we shall defeat the blasphemy that haunts our homeland, so too do I swear that despair will not be the end of us. Keep the faith and look for the, to the horizon, for brighter days will come. As you say, Elder Cetia, as you say, Kleptina is not here, and so we are free to return to our homes. I but urge you to take care, care on the path back. We will, Elder Cetia. Storm has passed, but a darker tempest roils in the distance. So long as the specter of despair looms, the people will struggle to take any w words of comfort to heart. We will see more tragedies like this. The elementals, too, cry out for a solution. The longer we struggle to resolve the crisis, the more innocent lives we put at risk. Rhea O said we, we would need to turn to the elementals for assistance, and I kn now know that she was right, and so I will seek audience with the Great One. However, there are preparations I must attend to first. I shall make the proper ablutions at the lotus stand. Pray, return to the outer steps, and await my summons. Despite our best efforts, we have been unable to be prevent further loss of life. I, I foresee even greater hardship ahead. As we press on, we mustn't forget the words of the Elder Seeds here. We must strive to remain undaunted in the face of despair. She is preparing for her communion with the Great One. When the time is right, she will call upon us both. Till then, my friend, stay strong. The situation has worsened since last we spoke. Glepnir grows bolder in his attacks and the conjurers are spread thin in their efforts to attend the victims. Moreover, there is no closer to finding a means to counteract the blasphemy's poison. There is no choice but to wait until death claims them. Some are overwhelmed by hopelessness, becoming mad beasts that lash out in their former countrymen. Such tragedies all too easily beget further tragedies be as bereaved loved ones are in turn overcome and share in the same horrid fate. People seek, speak of these incidences in hushed whispers, afraid that any moment a monster might appear within their midst. We could find a cure for the blasphemy's poison. 
Indeed. Let us hope the Aldecidia's efforts to enlist the aid of the elementals are successful, and that, united, we may at last cleanse the Twelveswood of this evil once and for all. Urgent news, Amigos. Kleptin has ambushed a party of wood whalers. They are engaged with the blasphemy near the Guardian Tree, where the Great One slumbers. This bodes ill. Mm, has it... Has it divined the Elder Cito's intent? Is it attempting to prevent her from communing with the elementals? Bah! In any event, we cannot let Glepnir harm the tree. The Elder Cito bade us rendezvous with her at Sorrel Haven, and we leave at once. Uh, let me actually see where exactly. Yeah, it's just outside the Wolf Gate. White Wolf Gate. Is right over here. Arms and arms are strewn across the ground, but there is no other trace of man or blasphemy. I see. I think I know what happened here. Even though I pray that I am wrong. There is no sign of the wood whaler save their arms and armor. Seasoned warriors would never cast aside their equipment, but here it lies. And I see not a single body. In the face of certain death, even the bravest among us can succumb to despair. Before the blasphemy's poison took them, they transformed. Gleipnir. Mir yeah, could not have gone far. He must be watching us even now. Be on your guard. The air is thick with corruption. If the wood whalers succumb to men, then we, we can expect a hard fight. Though I dread the thought of hurting our brave soldiers, we cannot allow the creatures they have become ro to roam free. Let us form two groups to more quickly track down and call the beasts. Once we have finished, we shall regroup under the boughs of the Guardian Tree. Let's actually go this way.
You have laid to rest the last of the returned whalers. Reunite with your companions at Evershade. Our work is done then. The loss of so many brave souls is tragic, but now that they are at peace, Guardian Tree is safe. Let us take comfort in that. I but pray that the Great One will hear my plea. Elder Cetia, are you hurt? The Great One is filled with fear, an all-consuming fear unlike any I have ever felt. It's spoken to me, and its words are clarion. Drive the evil away. Drive the evil away. We can think of not else, and so we will not receive the aid we seek. Not until we can dispel the dread that claws the Force very hard. No. This was our last hope. We are not alone. And we see the blasphemy for the first time. There can be no mistake, this is the profane beast, the blasphemy that has marred the twelve woods in despair. Gleipner. Stay back! Makes for the guardian tree, we must stop it! A poison! You mustn't let it touch you! There's some strength! Here's the echo. In accordance with our covenant, we Pajal have been blessed with the element by the elementals. From the moment we are chosen, we are bound to act as mediators. No! No! No, 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 no. Oh no, 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 no. It it like Oh please, please don't be. Um I have a thought already of what this might be. <laughs> In the men in nature. The most skilled among us are, are honored as Cetius, and it is our duty to guide Gridania through times both poor and prosperous. Oh god. I cannot say which of you will be found more worthy, in my estimation. Both have potential to become Cetius. For that, I became more certain by the day.
But I don't want to be a seed seer. I never wanted to be a Pajal either. I never asked for any of this. Why can't I live a normal life like everyone else? How come I don't get to grow old? Why am I cursed with these ugly horns? I like them. But maybe we didn't didn't choose to be born this way. But I don't think it makes us that different from anyone else. It's a rare gift, a blessing even. And if we can use it to help others, then we should. Don't give up on becoming a seed seer, Connie. Oh. Okay. We'd all be worse for it. Oh, that's Connie. A blessing? I never thought of it that way. I suppose I just hated not having the choice. But maybe you're right. Okay, so this is not what I expected. It's the boy. The matron is merciful. The elder seed seed has fallen unconscious, but is otherwise unharmed. The blasphemy must not have touched her, for I did not see the telltale mark of poison. Still, I'm no healer, and she should be looked after by those who are. I shall carry her back to Gradania. You must leave before Glepni returns. Await me at the Adam's Nest. Okay. It wasn't what I thought it was. <sighs> Didn't breathe out. I sense that the boy in that vision, um, male friend of Connie Senna, um, probably felt the despair because he never got to actually become a seed sealer or something like that. Because he seemed to be more, more motivated to be a seed seer than Ani at that time. Allow me to thank you again for your assistance. The elder seed seer has been delivered in the care of Isumini An. And by the grace of the elementals will she make a full recovery. In fact, she has already regained consciousness, but is not yet allowed to receive visitors. We can but wait for now. God damn it! I was useless! do nothing while the elder seed seer face Glipnir alone. I was to be her shield, that I could stand before, before you while she before you while she lies in bed is proof of my failure. When he said it still does it still requires your protection. You truly are the hero of whom the bards sing, aren't you? You suffered terrible trials, and yet still you stand tall and resolute. Thank you for your counsel. How close I came to forgetting the lessons of my past. I've spoken of it of it to few, truth be told. Brings me shame to recall it. I fought at Cartano, not as a soldier of the Eorzean Alliance, but as a conscript of the Guardian Imperial Army. Find an armor of Magitech, another drop in the sea of a pitiless, pitiless metal. You grow numb to the violence and the killing out of necessity. Comes routine. Work, work to earn your next meal. And when the moon shattered and the dragon emerged, and when the dust had settled, 
I was another body clinging to life amongst the fallen. I remember staring at the the burning sun above, growing weaker, wondering if the heat or an, wondering if the heat or an Eorzean blade would finish the job. But it wasn't death that came, but salvation. I was delivered from my wealthy earned fate by the elder Seedseer, who deigned to save a man who once bared steel against her people. Her kindness didn't end there. Once my wounds were healed, she welcomed me with open arms. Never did she regard me with distrust, nor did she ever make me feel obliged to repay my debt. She fought not to take life, but to safeguard it. Though my, our French, through our friendship, I came to see the wisdom in that distinction, and pledged my remaining years to her service. Twould have accomplished nothing to throw myself against Glipnia in vain, and even if there was a profit to be found in the sacrifice, she would not abide it. Your words serve to remind me of this. We will defeat the blasphemy eye, but we will do so without forsaking what that which we hold dear. This I swear. Good job. So two more quests and then I have to do some dungeons to get the last one. Although this does give me a little bit of a boost. There we go. The Elder Cetia has grown strong enough to receive visitors. Come. We must go to Sil Stilglane Fane for at once. Right around the corner. The seats here fills my heart with joy to see you in better health. I am glad by your presence as well, my friend. Unless you wonder, know that the conjurers found no trace of the poison in my humors. If you are ready, I will reassume my search for Glepnia. They may not be up to the task, but they may be up to the task, but you are not. It is one thing to engage in conversation. Conversation, quite another to go gallivanting about the Twelveswood, hunting a blasphemy. I am aware you are a conjurer of surpassing skill and would not presume to gainsay your judgment, but have my wounds not healed? Those visible to the naked eye, perhaps. I worry that the strain of your communion with the Great One has taken a toll on you in ways we have not, uh, we may have struggled to perceive. Great One is being a purest ether, and you are exposed to an unbridled despair. It's raw terror, and there may be consequences. I'm aware of that, but Glipnia must be stopped. Until the blasphemy is laid low, people will continue to die. How am I to carry out my duties in these cloistered here? How am I to deliver the forest and its people from this despair? It's your duty that demand you remain. I understand your frustration, but if you, are, you were to fall in battle, if your guiding light you bear were to fade, then all Cardania would be lost. Rest, honey. Rest and gather your strength so that when the time comes, you are fit to do what must be done. In the meantime, trust in your allies. Isumi, as we saw from the vision, is way older than Kani. Kani is like 20-something. He is agile, so he ages much differently. I think he's actually like over a hundred years old or something. Like he's it's he's really old. Let me see if I can find some reference. Thank you. 
buy that geese over there. We do not have his age. All, all we can really say is that All we really can say is that he's old. I want to say he's like 200 years old or something like that. I'm going to try some other possible resources. Oh, yeah. oh, wait a minute. I think I found one. He's sitting on about 230 years old. Yeah, 230 years old. Versus Connie, who's like... ...26 or something like that. Yeah, 26. I found. 230. Maybe sure, but... Is more, ...there's more to it. This Connie kind of rested and gathered your strength and be touched rest of your eyes. Okay. Listen to your elders, Elder Seed Seer. You're right. That said, I see no reason I cannot join in planning our next step. As you said before, conversation is quite unlike gall gallivanting about on a hunt. Our encounter with Glepnir has made it plain that we cannot hope to triumph over it as we are. Only with the Great One's power can we achieve victory. When the Seventh Unborn Calamity was nigh and the Great One committed a portion of its boundless strength to extend a barrier over heaven and earth, the Ermine Hedge, thus has the, has the Twelve Woods spared the worst. If we can convince it to again lend us even a small measure of its power, we would not need fear the poison. Therefore, I believe we should pour our efforts into placating the elementals that we might earn their favor. We must make your voice heard then, yes. Must show that we are not the enemy. We must show we are not the enemy. Indeed, we must find a way to show the Great One of our good intentions. To remind it that uh, that we labor not for its destruction but its salvation. I think that I think too we must gain a better understanding of what drives Glipnir. It seems to bear a resentment towards the elementals, the great one in particular. Why? I have pondered the question myself. Lingering memories of the pers person Glipnir once was may be responsible. Reports from Ratzet Han suggest this is likely the case in fact. If we can but ascertain the original identity of the blasphemy, but where are we going to begin our investigations? Um, um, hello? I had an echo. You were granted a vision of Gupnir's past? And I was there? Then, then I may know who he is. Or was. As do I. The boy who trained alongside Connie in her youth. Ea Sura Supin. After all these years, is this what became of him? Ah, you mentioned him briefly before. Were you close?
Yusur was a Pajali like me, but he never known, but he has ne had never known his parents and devoted himself wholly to his studies. He embraced the world the forest had bestowed upon him, and truth be told, was a much better student than I ever was. Fair assessment. Fair assessment, despite your esteemed heritage. You never t took to my lessons as well as he, ever dreaming of the outside world. Stealing off into the woods more times than I can count, I could not keep watch over you for all hours, not even if I tried. Now this is here, a rebellious spirit. I can scarce imagine it. I resented being a pal, Jal. I was in was inconceivable to me that I could not live among the others, and I did not sc not scruple to ex express my misgivings to Isui Miyang at every opportunity. Eastura was a pillar of constant support. It was thanks to his encouragement that I at last embraced my destiny and resolved to use my gift for the greater good. We would become Sitsias together, I believed. Till one fateful day when we were gathering herbs in the forest at Isuyumiyo's behest. We met a wander wanderer hailing from a distant land who told us that his beloved was ch was with child, that he, he had traveled to Gatania to beseech the Great One for a painless birth. He asked us to guide him to the Guardian Tree. However, entry into such sacred places were not ours to permit. There was something odd about his demeanor besides. With regret, I refused him, but Easura was loath to turn away a goodly stranger in need. He agreed to guide the men, despite my protestations. I ran to Yisu Miyam as fast as I could, and together we made haste to the Guardian Tree. We found the man motionless on the ground, having succumbed to the Great One's rage. Next to him was Easura, alive but unconscious. In time, we discovered and related the whole story. In truth, the man had been an adventurer, a seeker of wealth and, and glory, and as he knelt to make false supplications, he lunged forward to tear a branch from the guardian tree. He was, he was yet a child, and Isura had no inkling of the darkness that could dwell within men's hearts. He le learned the lesson that day. The price he paid for it was indeed great. The Great One stripped Isura of his horns, and with them, the right to call him self a pajal. I was forced to expel it. I was exposed to effects expelled from the thing. I never saw him again, nor heard a, heard a word of what had become of him, though not to, for lack of trying. Despite his hardships, did he remain in the Twelfth Wood all this time, I wonder? He dreamed of naught else but becoming seeds here of a life in service to the people in the forest. He knew the weight of the responsibility was eager to bear it, but he was deprived of the purpose by the very elementals he loved, and yet he did not lose that will to serve, I suspect, instead resolved to watch over the Twelve Woods in his own way. I shudder to think, think what could have hastened his transformation into Glipner, as if his life was not harsh enough. In our final conversation, Eosura confided in me that he would search for a means to calm the Great One's rage and earn absolution. To that end, he said he would seek the counsel of the Mughals. They have called the Twelve Woods home for far longer than we have, so none had more, more like to have knowledge of their, its most hidden workings. That comes as no surprise. He would not give up so easily on his dream. Even if the Mughals knew not of Eosura, they may be able to help us in other ways. You travel to the Bramble Patch in my stead, Emigos. I have faith they will accept you with their characteristic plum. Your thing? Okay, Hawthorne Hut.
high whisker wall. Uh, 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 cup de coop. Um, yeah, about this that time I gave you a beating because you summoned the great, great king Mogamog. Um, no hard feelings. Huh? Quite a peculiar face, face you have, Koopo. Familiar, too. Who wouldn't be the self-same warrior who gave the legendary Moogle Scar what for, would you? Him a ghost, was it? Yeah. Aha! It's an honor to meet you. Allow me to thank you for your per thank you personally for bringing this silliness to an end. Pukwapika is the name. What brings you to our neck of the Twelve's Wood? <laughs> Why, what a pleasant coincidence. We were just discussing how we ought to go about calming the elementals, Kupo. That blasphemy with the dreadful horns has got them on edge, and for good reason. I had to ask my personal guard here to, to sleep with one eye open. In case you haven't noticed, the beast corruption has been spreading all throughout the twelve the woods. Needless to say, we've all got to stand up and put the Twelve Wood to rights. Rhea O oh, suggested that the Mughals contribute by scouring the forest for even the smallest sign of taint. Got to cleanse it before it gets out of hand, you know. Difficult and time-consuming work, but it is in service of the forest. And we'll do, do it gladly, Koopo. <laughs> hey, I know you. You're the adventurer who gave me some of my, my finest scars. My cup de Koopa of the Mughals guard. No hard feelings with the whole hail to the king, Koopo. That I hope. Oh, actually, he apologized to me. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to call for a rematch either. In case you're worried about, about that, Rayo and the others cured us of our temporary and afterwards let us down. <laughs> Set us down for a stern lecture. No more calling upon good King Mogamog the Twelfth Twelfth for us. May he ever remain unsummoned by his royal grace and splendor. Indeed, and what better way to make up for the... I love this. I love the Moogles. I love the Moogles so much. Some people absolutely hate them, and I can understand that. But I love them. Indeed, and what better way to make up for the past descriptions than to serve the realm? Mm. Even now, our, our kin scour every ilm of the Twelve's Wood, and we would be remiss not to do our part. We would be overjoyed to have a hero such as you helping us as well. If you're willing... Something tells me you have a uh, sharp a sharp eye for the taint we seek to cleanse. We count on you, Koopo? Your reputation for a magnanimity... Mag magnat... That word is well-deserved. Let's begin by moving to higher ground. That we may sur survey the area and locate any particular nasty spots of blight. Where are they? Are they under this tree? Nope, they're up. Oh, there he is. Tell me I could talk to him while mounted. Oh, you were able to make your way up here after all. I was worried you were stuck. Apologies for leaving you behind. It's so easy to forget that you, your kind lacks wings. <laughs> I had to hop on a griffin. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> there, to the south. Let us cleanse the Fessory Tate at once! Thank <laughs> you. 
That was some fine work, Koopo. I dare say it's, it's in even better shape than it was before. The others are doubtless flittering about stamping out corruption work. Whatsoever, it, it rears its hideous heads. If I were the great ones, I would have applauded our efforts. Well, insofar as being a being uh, without hands or hand, without hands can clap. I suppose. How goes the tank cleansing, uh, cup de coop? I did what I could, but I swear, as soon as I finished with one area, two more started manifesting in fresh taint. Force ability to heal itself is waning, and this sickness is spreading too fast for even a legion of Moogles to manage. If we don't come up with a better solution soon, the situation is more grave than we imagined, Koopo. Well, what do we do? We should maintain our efforts to purify the forest regardless. But since there is only so many of us, we must also help the forest to remember how to help itself. Brilliant idea, I think. How do we go, we go about doing that? Well, I've been getting getting to that part, Koopo. Uh, we, um... I've got it! We perform the friending! The friending? When the good name of Good King Mugumonga the Twelfth may shower us with love and compassion and Koopo nuts, is that? <laughs> I love the Moogles. Truth be told, I couldn't remember the ancient rite's name, so I just came up with something up, to, <laughs> up on the spot, Koopo. <laughs> Let's forget about that for now and move on to the stuff I do remember. <laughs> it's an old, old ceremony first performed when the nation of Gardania was but a spark of an idea for random thought in this founder's head. They, they knew that if they were to establish a home within the Twelve Woods that they would first have to entreat the elementals for permission. So a mage in their company found and clenched a few sources of foul ether and planted saplings in their place and concentrated and consecrated the soil with a prayer to show the forest the purity of its intentions. The elementals were so taken with this display that not only did they permit his people to settle within the forest, they also bestowed upon him their blessing as proof of their new covenant, Koopo. Ah, I remember now. The Gadanians still honor the agreement to this day, for even for every tree that was cut down, a sapling is planted. So, if we allow history's example, we can soothe the forest pain and also nourish it with new life. That's right, Koopo. Oh, and I haven't finished with that story. Remember the mage who planted the, those sacred saplings? They were none other than Joran, sire of Iokapoda, the very first Pagile. From that day forward, the elementals would bless a few... few a select few cures with horns, favoring them with their friendship. Pajal are exalted by all the peoples of the Twelve Woods, even we Moogles look upon, upon them with awe. And that's how it all began. Hmm, something wrong, Koopo? You have a strange look on your face. Maybe maybe a Pajal, or a former Pajal. How, how dreadful, Akupo. What exactly are you saying? Exposition. Hmm. So the man you think may have been, become Glepnir was a Pajal stripped of his blessing, and the blasphemy kills with a poison that manifests symptoms that resemble those of the creeping death. I feel sorry for this Easura. To love the elementals only to be shunned by them. To be surrounded by the beauty of the Twelves would know that he was forever an outsider. All for a child's mistake. That despair could easily have caused him to turn. And his poison that preys upon them, upon those who bear the Twelvewood blessing, the cures, just like the Creeping Death one did. Might be another manifestation of that despair. That would explain the elementals and ease, Kupo. Must redouble our efforts to plant saplings, or they might never speak to us again. Indeed. Well, first things first, we gather as many saplings as we can. Amigos, wait for us at the Adder's Nest and make ready for a long, backbreaking day.
Do -do -do -do. Orientation. I think we got a little lag here, so. Not bad. Welcome back, Emma Ghost. Did the Moogles have any insight into problems? A reenactment of the ceremony which led to the foundation of Gridania? A fitting plan, given the gravity of the threat our nations now face. As ever, there is much work to be done before we even begin. While the Moogles gather saplings, we shall continue to scour the Twelve Wood for new beasts that must be purged. Let us pray that Elder Seed Seer regains her strength quickly as well, for now... Take a rest, my friend. It is a rare indulgence these days, and one we would earn a thousand times over. Okay, I'm gonna actually do the down up sort of thing, except a little longer because I need to use the restroom, and I probably want to eat some more of my soup and have some food. So, great! I'll try to be back at 2:30 Central Time. Yeah, that'll, that'll be it. Stay tuned. 